everyone and welcome back. These guys just cannot stay out of the pig pen. I might I might have to shoot the golem because I'm not sure if they're pathfinding to the golem if they see danger. Because they just all keep ending up here and I don't know why. I shouldn't stand here, should I? I'm sorry, Mr. Golem. We'll see if this makes any difference. Do they stop coming in here? Probably not. At least it's easy enough to find them and let them out. On with the day. One day I'll stop trying to jump over my own unjumpable walls. So today's plan is to work on this bit. I want to definitely do the graveyard, which is this scrib blob here. And I want to put in some of the buildings around it. I don't know how many I'll get done. I think I'd at least like to get this frontage. So maybe this yellow one, this blue one, this yellow one, and this blue one. So maybe these four. If I can do more, I'll also do more, but we'll see. I probably won't get around to doing any of the underground stuff today. I was talking about cri crypts, crypts and catacombs. I don't think I'll get around to that today. I might try and do that sort of in one big session. Once we've got the top part of the town done, I can then dig down, make more space and make it its own unique little place, not just something crammed under the graveyard. It wants to be quite big. I don't want it to be massive. I don't want it under the entire town. I just want there to be little noodly pockets. Maybe some of the buildings have basements. I think the, the pub would definitely have a basement. Anyway, so whilst I need to go now into creative mode to actually plan these builds out, I'm going to take you with me. You can come and see how I mess around and come up with any kind of ideas at all. It's nothing, it's nothing thrilling, but uh, some people might find it interesting. So I'll see you there. But wait, before we do that, I've just got to check something. So sometimes when you're exporting footage with the replay mod, the um, entities and the, the creatures and things, they don't actually turn up in the display where they turn up in the final rendered video. When I was exporting this, the goats didn't show up in the kind of the editing bit, but they, they appeared in the final video. I've just noticed when I was exporting the opening sweeps here, there was a great big pile of villagers outside the wall. Are they actually here? They are. Why is there... Hello? Why are these guys suddenly out here? Has an enderman taken a piece of gravel? Where are they coming from? There's a piece of gravel missing from there. Are they... They're just... Com this is where all my villagers keep going. Yeah, they can go through here. Take that as well. Okay, this is a bit weird. I didn't realise there were so many out here. Sometimes I find one or two. I think this is about 10 or 12. All right then, go on. I know you want to. You'll want to come bedtime. About you guys, I shall send you through. We shall wait for night time, and these guys can go back to bed. Oh, why are you all here? When I said before that I had a load of villagers go missing, I did check over the wall, so I have no idea where they were hiding, and why they've suddenly just decided to appear. I mean, I fly around the base so often I would spot them, so it must be a fairly new thing. We we'll definitely need to come back and add some more height to some of these. Got some crafting tables on me, haven't I? Uh, I'll just use these. Oh, it's very open here. I literally just took a thing here because they could step over it, and as I broke it, a guy went up and over and over and completely <laughs> into the wilderness. Where are they trying to go? Where did he go? Unless he just came straight back in again. It's a bit of a shame because I do like them being able to see over, but if they're going to just be weird about it, then they can have no more going over. I mean, we're going to get the odd escapee anyway because they can just get out from like pushing each other and stuff. But if I can get rid of most of the escape routes, I shouldn't really call them escape routes, should I? That's a bit sinister. These things I will now just put where well, they can't really do any harm. I don't even think about it. Can't get out here. Can't get out here. An absolute push. They could maybe jump onto that. Okay, I think the wall is secured from a villager's perspective. Now, why will these guys not go back to the beds? They're just standing here. He is. He's got it figured out. Oh, there's a hole there. Go through. Go through. Go on. Ooh, lovely village. Lovely jubbly village. Right, fine. Wow. Okay. There's one. There's two. Time to block up the hole. Oink. I 
think that's most people through, so I'm going to start blocking up these holes and getting away from the creepers. I don't have my bow out. Where's my bow? I'm sorry, guys. You'll have to wait, because we are being harassed. Oh, you came in. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. I don't have time to get you a boat. Nope. So I think now it's just these guys here, and I'm hoping if I use some dirt, I can actually path them back up. And they can just go back onto the wall. There, there, there. Pick that one off for now. Okay, now can I get you to step up? Go on. Good man. Okay, thank you. Um, can you get on with it? Thank you. That is not what I had in mind. I think they're doing it to taunt me. Have they gone over the wall anywhere else? Or have they just... Oh no, they've gone to the barrels. That's fine. They can, whoops. They can all go around there and be fishermen. That's fine. Do a final check of the wall. I mean, I suppose they don't. I suppose they probably can. I'm trying to not put blocks on top of wood because it just looks a bit weird, but... Hmm. Fine, we'll just have to take that one out. I've just got to press myself into things and then jump. Oh, they can get right over here. Okay, you need to not be a wall. There we are. If they really wanted to, they could diagonal there as well. That's so annoying. And I'm going to pop that there. Put them there. There we are. I feel like that's probably fine. They can technically get up onto this barrel and then up. So I don't know if I should do something here. Maybe just move that as well. Take that one out. You can have your barrel there. Yeah. I might just have to move that barrel because it's going to be a problem. Okay, it can just go there up and out. Well, that was a little fiasco, but I think that's everybody back in. Can't see anybody around. And that was just very fortuitously spotted on the replay mod, I thought it was just a glitch. I wasn't even going to come check it out, but it consistently kept appearing throughout the footage, so that was a lucky capture. I have no idea how long they've been out here. Now we'll go to the creative world. Welcome. You join me in the creative realms. I'm afraid that I have built this in the middle of nowhere because I do not want you seeing my other builds just yet. I have plans. They are spoilers. They are secrets. Not for you just now. But that's just the path to show me where to go to get back to my main building area. So the first thing I usually do is I make a palette and I put it off to one side and it's just all the common blocks that I typically use when building. If I know I'm doing something in particular, I just slap the block palette down and then I can just grab what I want when I want it. Now I have already done some building. Uh, these are way too big. What I tend to do is I tend to just get a very loose idea out of my head and onto the <laughs> the page, the uh, the super flat. So it, I tend to not really obey any rules at this point. I just know that I want it to be such a height, such a feeling. I want to use a particular colour palette, that kind of thing. And most of the time, what comes out is nonsense. So I really like this window section. This is very nice. We go up. This is uh, a bit basic and kind of irrelevant. Didn't really do anything here that's particularly noteworthy. And then I went up here. It originally was just a roof. It is now dormers. And they're just typical dormers. Nothing exciting about this. This building is way too tall for the town, or at least for the part of the town that I'm currently looking to build. So that's kind of out of bounds now. I've got some ideas out of my head. I know that this is too tall. I know that the roof is too steep. It's too much too big. So then I went to the other side. And I like to build things kind of as if they were in situ, so rather than having rows and rows of buildings, I will kind of cram things in to get the, the crammed in feel. Makes it a little hard to navigate, but never mind. So this one was kind of a reverse, where we have a bigger downstairs, and then the upstairs shrinks back because this building is leaning over, and then we just have a roof. I realised I liked this one even less. Something about the windows looks too modern. I think it's the fact that it's tall glass, because... Uh, Older buildings typically had much smaller windows because glass was expensive, so as soon as you put big glass in things, it tends to look a bit more modern. It tends to not read right. Then there's this weird, like, balcony area. No idea what this was about, but I know that I don't want it. And learning what you don't want is just as important as learning what you do want. So these two buildings together, just messing around, kind of took about 15-20 minutes to bring them together. 
and I realised a lot of things that I do and don't want. I like this kind of window frame, I like the fact that the building was leaning over by a block or two, and I liked the fact that it was risen from the path. Rather than having the front doors of the buildings open directly onto the street, this one comes around here and you'd go through the door there. So there were a few things I realised from this, so it wasn't a waste of time, but it certainly wasn't on the right track. So from here, I went to street number two, which was this one. These are smaller buildings, but using some of the similar language that was developed here. So using these kind of wood layouts for the windows, and then having a lower version of the roof. It's risen. Also missing a block in there. It is risen from the street, which gives it a nice feel. This is actually two tiny buildings, and you have to go down this little alleyway to get to it. Which I really like. I like that noodly element. They're tiny little rooms, and then you can go up into tiny little rooms above as well. So I do like those, but they are a bit crammed. So the, the second take was more or less the same thing, but just playing with a slightly different layout. This one has a slightly protruding little window area here. And in here, we have just a bit more shaping. It's not a box. We've got the fireplace here, and we've got this little window protrusion. So it's a nice shape to play around with when it comes to decorating. And then similarly, a little room upstairs. I also had these little end windows, which I really like. I'll show you those from outside. Around the chimney, we've got these little windows either side. I just like how that looks. But yes, I like these. Now, obviously, my buildings that I've got in the um, in the actual village aren't square. So it's kind of just figuring out these little these little sections, little five gaps or little four gaps, and how I would decorate them. So I'm not planning on rebuilding any one building directly into the survival world with this one. I'm planning on just making like a collage of things that I can pick from. With some designs, I very much want to follow a plan I've already developed, and with some, I want to be a bit more freehand. And since the other houses in the village kind of lost their way anyway, even though I planned them out, I don't really think I need to bother planning them out perfectly. I can just freehand it once I've got a basic palette down. Once I realised that I liked these sorts of designs and these sorts of colour palettes and things, I then decided to do little tests for higher versions. So this is adding a second story that is not hidden in the loft. So these are just window fronts. I haven't bothered doing doorways for most of these because these are just frontages. There's nothing around the backs. So whilst I like this one, it is perhaps a little bit too tall because I think this gap, these, these two blocks here, I think are basically irrelevant in terms of how the building functions. You end up with a very high ceiling downstairs and then you end up having to kind of do a two block fill to make the window make sense inside. I also just think it's going to be too tall as you're looking through the town as you're walking through it. If there were all this sort of height, I think it would just be too much. There might be the odd bit of a house that's this tall, particularly around the graveyard. It might be nice to have a couple of houses that are a little bit more elevated, but for the most part, this is probably a bit too tall. So I tried scrunching it a little bit, and I much prefer how this came out. I think I really enjoy using the fence posts, and I really prefer using the oak trap doors instead of glass. I think the glass just looks a little bit too modern, whereas having little wooden shutters Makes more sense. You can you can imply that there's glass in there if you want, or not. It's up to you. Just using gates for a bit of texture, using banners for a bit of colour. I currently have been using red and brown terracotta mostly, so we'll we'll use other colours as and when we're building. And then we've got the tatty roof up top. The tatty roof adds so much character. Moving along, I just did a different variant. This one would be a doorway. Have I actually got a door? We'll pop a doorway in this one and then see it as a door. This one's just a simple doorway on the ground level, and then we've got a more complicated window on the top. And again, I quite like this one. It actually ended up at pretty much the same height as this one. This one steps forwards a little bit more, which I really like. This one, I think, only steps forward by one block, which is why the roof is at a different, um, a different end point. Then I realised I was really only considering the flat roof coming down over the, uh, the frontage, so I did one that was in the pitch. I don't know, I don't know, building terms. So it's on the end, it's on the gable of the, the roof, and then, uh, yeah, trying like a little a little overhang over the door, and then keeping the windows a bit more simple, having some structure to hold up this overhang, and then having a big complicated window over the top. I say complicated, but you know what I mean. I'm actually just going to pop some buttons in there, I think. Yeah, I quite like that. Buttons really do add an awful lot to builds. I also quite like adding this beam, as if it's almost like a divider between the buildings and the property line quite like how that um, just adds a bit more solidity to the base of the building, especially since roofs in Minecraft can end up very heavy, very big and heavy compared to the rest of the building. So 
So I really like this one, but as a test, it's perhaps a little bit too big in scale. It could do to maybe be, what is it, seven blocks wide and then the edges, so it's nine wide. It maybe could have done to be seven to get a better feel for how it will look in the village, but it's I like it conceptually. It just needs some um, tidying up. And then we've got like a tiny compact version. So this is a little, is that seven? Yes, it is. A little seven block version. So it's a similar thing to this, but compacted into a seven block version and there's no upstairs window bit because this one instead has little side dormers, which I also quite like. And considering we're going to have a lot of broken up roofs, it makes sense that we're going to have a lot of little dormers. But this is generally how I plan stuff out. I get a little palette, I start with something big and crazy just to get the ideas out, and then I narrow it down to what I want based on what I know I don't want. And none of these, none of these frontages or anything like that are going to be copied directly into what I'm building. It is, it's just an idea, it's like a sketchbook. And all of this, just flying around, listening to music, building all of this, not really thinking about anything, just going with what felt right. All of this took about two hours tops. It's not a hugely time consuming thing to do if you enjoy it. You just put on some music, put on a movie, put on some audiobooks, whatever you enjoy and just just build them. Don't worry about it, just keep placing and breaking blocks. I've had a few people ask about why I don't use Lightmatica. So as I understand it, Lightmatica is a mod where in creative mode you can kind of select blocks that you want and then when you go into your survival mode you paste in and it comes up as like a ghostly wireframe that you can then fill in and it tells you which blocks to put where. And I understand that for a lot of people that's probably very helpful and they're probably going to use it and to be honest I will probably use it when it comes to the forge because if I mess up the forge I am going to throw my computer out the window. But I have said that I'm trying to keep this world vanilla and I think for smaller projects like this this is going to also include the method. We're just building some little townhouses here. I don't think we need to use mods to make it easier. I think we can just do it. It's to each their own. Use mods as and when you find it appropriate or necessary, when it helps you. But honestly, given the scale of the forge that I have planned, I will probably use Lightmatica for that and I will be completely transparent about that. I will make it clear that I have used Lightmatica as and when or if I ever use it. But anyway, I am quite happy with all of these concepts that I've got now. So I'm going to take some screenshots and then I'm just going to start building in survival, I think. I think I'll start with the graveyard and then I'll put the buildings in around it. Screenshot time. And you joined me back in survival. What I think I'm going to do is build the graveyard first, or at least like the first 75% of the graveyard. Just get the foundations in, get it the size and height and everything that I want. And then I'm going to put the buildings in around it. I will bring you back out with a time lapse when I come to put the foundational work in. Because this still needs figuring out. I haven't decided on any of this yet. So we'll figure it out together. We'll plan around with the heights and see where we want the roof lines to be. We'll use dirt and pillar around and figure things out. And then I'll build it. So, graveyard first, and then I'll bring you back. See you in a few seconds, I should imagine. we are the basics of the graveyard is done we have a few plots in all of this will get decorated properly made to look proper I might get rid of some of these because it's a bit crowded so we'll put the decorations in properly when we're done so that I know that stuff isn't clashing with buildings it's got a little archway we come down a little side stair which I need to finish off and it comes onto the path here I've uh, walled up the edges there's a little path up here which will connect to the back of these houses and to this outer side of the graveyard. I might put something here, there might be another little building. Probably just a storage shed, it might be like a little shed for maintenance for the graveyard here. Uh, might put something here as well, might put a courtyard here on the back of this house. But for now it is done, it is in place and we can start planning the buildings around it. It's got nice views out over the water. There aren't going to be any buildings in front of this, it's just going out onto the water. And like I said, these edges will get decorated more. These are kind of just placeholders at the moment. We'll, uh, we'll figure out something properly once buildings are in place. Now we shall sort out some of these buildings, figure out where they're going. So we've got this little weird bit here, which we said might be some kind of tower. So what I think I'm going to do is pillar this bit up. 
for maybe about 15, maybe 15 to 18, something like that. And we'll just see how this looks from a distance height-wise. I've lost count already. That's 16, isn't it? Okay, we'll go with 16. The one tower... Oh. So one tower at that height. That's kind of okay. I think if it's got a, a pointy roof on it, like a, a steeple, it would probably need to be a couple of blocks higher. Let's look at it from back here between these rooftops. Is it way too short or is it way too tall? It's a little too in line with the top of the fountain, so I think it needs to either go a couple taller or a couple shorter. But I feel like that's okay. It's quite short in comparison to the pub. And I am beginning to think these roofs might have to go up a little bit, even if it's just three or four blocks or something. Not necessarily all the roofs on here, but just a couple of them. They might need to go up a little bit for a bit of height variation. Not this tall, just a little bit more. Can I land on it? I'm very bad at landing on one blocks. I cannot. Okay, we'll go up again. That, I think, is 20. Might just square off the top so it gives the impression of a building top. And then I think I'll put some roof lines around it. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Just line it off. I think this is 9. And we'll go have a look again. Height-wise, I feel like that one's a bit better now. It's maybe a little awkwardly in line with the top of the library, because I think that's what that is. But as the rest of the build comes in behind it, does that improve? Yeah, okay, it's just that one that one point where it's just a little too in line with that. Never mind. It does make that in the background look really grand and high up, though, so that's quite nice. Yeah, so I like that as a height. For like a little narrow tower by the graveyard, that might work quite well. And then there's those, the rooftops. I feel like that 12 one is a bit too high because it's completely blocking the view of things like the library and it's going to block the view of things like the uh, nether portal. The 9 is kind of okay because it's obviously going to be at an angle, so you're not going to lose every bit of the view. You're just going to lose hints of it. So I think I might cap 9 as the highest point of most buildings on this stretch. Yeah, that's probably high enough. And that's probably just a bit too high, maybe along the edge of the tower, so have it lower on the street and then just as it's meeting the tower we maybe go up a little bit more, but I think as a, as a full roof that's probably a bit too much. Right, now I need to just start marking in foundations of these buildings. It's just becoming night again, of course it is. I'm exceptionally good at starting projects just as the night kicks in. And I think I'll have the doorway there. Um, I think I'll square that one off. So I can either have little bed nooks, or these can be things like the fireplaces. This joins onto that building, which is the stairs down. So this might actually work well as a little fireplace, because this will be a cute little thing just attached to the side here. Go to sleep. You do still get monsters out here, because not everything is perfectly lit up. Also need to decide where the spruce is going. One, two, three, four, five, and then have it here as well. That feels a bit weird, but we'll see how that looks. So if we do that, well, the road here will have a little dip in where we can have the flower box or maybe they're just storing stuff. We've got the main frame holding up the floors and the roof and stuff. This little back bit can be a little lean-to area. Yeah, that feels that feels okay. Moving along. And this one kicks out a bit, so I'm going to put the wood in first. You can probably borrow some of this, have it carry through a little bit. Then again... Maybe not. Oh, yes, you can carry on this line. Maybe not the front line, but this back line, I think, can carry through. Especially since this is the tower. It's a good point. How am I going to put the corners on the tower? That one. That one? I think so, yeah. That one. Okay, I'm just going to leave that at that for now, and I'll figure it out. These are going to be some weird buildings. They're going to be really fun to figure out. And this one. I think I might stagger this one forwards a bit in terms of some of its wood placement. Is that on that line? Oh, it isn't. Do I want to? No, I don't. Don't square things off. They're meant to be wonky. It lines up with the tower. That's fine. That's fine. I can handle that one. Back to putting in the stone bits. So I think this is the front door for this one. It'll have side doors as well. I have a door out here. Yeah, that can be a door through this little courtyard bit. Ooh, this would make a really snug little doorway there. I like that. Where do I want the front door on this one? Do I want two here? Or do I want another one in this bit of the street? It's probably better off there. Now to take out all the wool. I'm actually remembering to use my shears. I brought them last time and then punched everything. Now they are all on the same level, but I quite like that for this little section. These houses are dropped down, so I like that there's a raised little section with the graveyard on it. 
that's kind of carrying on from this town height. But past this first layer of housing here, we'll then drop down and we'll go to these sorts of levels. Maybe we'll have a few houses up a little bit higher around here. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll figure things out as we go. Now we need to go get the rest of the things. I need terracotta and bricks mostly. They're the things I didn't pick up. We'll also get rid of the wool that's in my inventory. Yeah, we'll use the red one. Red, brown. I'll take green. I'll take the purple as well because I haven't used it much. I'm probably not going to use any of the paler colours. We want to keep a, a slightly more mature tone for this part of the town. There is a bit more colour in this bit here with the villages already, the little village by the uh, by the farms, but the actual main town I think we shall keep a little bit more subdued. I'm, uh, I'm not going to go as plant heavy either. This part of the village is really overgrown, which again kind of doesn't suit the look I was originally going for. It's just a bit of a bad habit that I've fallen back into. The villagers are still around and abouts, by the way. They're being very good and very behaved. Since we've got them back over the wall, they've moved properly back into this part of the village, which is lovely to see. Yeah, there's a good spread of villagers all over here now, which is really nice. But you can see that this is this is tonally very different for the town so far. There's similar elements of the building. There's obviously spruce and there's lots of beams. But yeah, it's it's tonally it's very cheerful and fun, which is cute and fine. But that's not what I originally planned. It's just kind of gotten out of hand. So I've got my box of stuff and I've got some more spruce. That should be everything I need. Now that I've got these foundations in, what I tend to do is then use some kind of decorative element, such as bricks or the terracotta, to decide which wall is what. Like, this is going to be the the end with the fireplace in it. If this is going to be the stairs down, it's probably only going to be two or three tall, with like a little slopey roof. So we'll just make this a nice tall brick end that you can see past the roof when it's in place. I might make that red. This can be a red front. I will just put that in entirely the wrong place. I should maybe fill in the floor because this is just getting to be annoying. I'll pop windows and stuff in later when I know everything's got its own place. I think the back I shall just make spruce. Do I want some stone walls as well? I think I will. I think I'll put some stone around the doorway here. Yeah, that looks all right. Put a window in there. A little bit of a stone frontage should be fine. Now this one... <sighs> thinking I'll make that one purple, but I didn't bring the purple with me. There it is. I think I'm going to go with spruce to separate these two buildings. And then I'll have kind of spruce cubby like that. I keep thinking I'm forgetting something, but I am, and it's wool. But wool is such a bold red. Like, I think I have used a bit in the village. I've obviously got some wool on those end gables, but... It's such a bold thing when it's um, the colours of wool. I, I tend to not use it too much. Uh, I think I'll go with purple all along the front as well. Again, we'll put windows in later. I think... Where do I want to put the fireplace in this one? I think I might put the fireplace here. Or do I want it off the... Hmm, might be nice. I also think about where the chimneys are going to be. Because it's nice to have the, the movement of the smoke. You don't want all of those in a like a perfectly uniform line, unless that's your intention, obviously. But if you're making a messy little town, you don't want all the chimneys in a line. These two, they're only one block apart, I think, on this line. So I might put this one here and probably go with stone around it. This building's going to be a bit weird because there's nowhere to really put windows, at least on the ground floor. It's probably going to get a second story, so I could have some straighter walls on the second story because it doesn't need to exactly match. Going to struggle putting windows in this one, I think. I'm going to do green. Can maybe put a window there. It's a bit snug on the inside, but never mind. Now, where to put your chimney? Because then we're going to have a similar problem of that being on the same line. Do I want a chimney in a corner? That might be quite cute. Does that look weird? A little bit, but I don't mind it. Anyway, I'll go to sleep because it is night. I will go fall to my doom. Now, the tower. It's going to be stone, so I'll just mark it in in stone. It doesn't need to be anything else. I'm actually going to take these up so I know that these are the full height ones. All right, so that should be three by three on the tower. Does it look okay from the dock? Because I want that to look like quite a mature building. It's not all cute and cheerful. I want that to be quite a, quite a darker colour. Yeah, I think that works all right. So this one wants a chimney that's further round, so I probably want it 
on this wall here. That is dirt. Because this building is off to one side, and all it's going to block view-wise is the already flat dock, I think I'm probably going to make this building a bit taller. Let's have this one be a little bit taller, have the tower, have some shorter buildings on this front. This one maybe be a midway between the shorter ones and this taller one. And then have some little ones around it. Okay, yeah, that sort of makes a bit of sense. We come up here and have a look. It's so hard to tell because you have the zoom in way too much or you're far too far out anyway. Yeah, I feel for now that that's okay. Obviously, it's going to overhang a little bit more where the rooftops go. And it's going to have um, different shaping on the second floors where they have second floors. They're not just going to continue upwards in straight lines. Yeah, I quite like that. I also need to put the path in. I think that's part of what's making it look so weird, is they're just floating. And obviously this park is going to be risen as well. I just marked it out on the floor, but it is going to be risen. I think I'll just use some dirt to put in the rooftop lines, decide exactly where each roof is going to end, and then I shall uh, just start building, I think. Spare my sanity, I am also going to put in a bit of dirt around everything, so I don't keep falling off. Now we shall put in some roof lines. This one's going to be probably three, one, two, three, and then pretty much the roof. A dinky little building. So I want this one to probably be here. This one I think I want a bit in the middle here. Yep, so that does that. But I like the idea that following this line, it actually goes up a couple again. I like the idea that this one only has like one section of the house that's this high. The other section is like a single story. It's actually really hard to explain what I'm doing. My brain is completely blanking. More so than usual. Here's my first efforts at um, layering the rooftops. And that feels like appropriate kind of heights. It is ever so slightly blocking. It is, it is going to block the view of the library, but never mind. I don't think I can do much to help that. We'll get a snippet of it through these rooftops here. That's the highest roof, this one here. And it's going to slope that way, I think. It's going to be like that. That's the tower, which at the moment is a bit chunky, because I, I was trying to figure out what it actually is once it's up there, but we'll figure it out once it's built. So it kind of staggers as it gets closer to the tower. These first few houses are pretty simple. This one, I don't know. <laughs> I've got some ideas. So if it's a line going across, then that's the central beam that's resting on the gables. So I've got a short gable here above the doorway and it joins onto the back of this bigger building here and then there's a taller one that's facing that way so it's here like this that the shorter one will intersect and we've got a similar arrangement on this one but it's just a bit neater and easier to figure out this one's roof is probably going to look really chunky in comparison to the building it's probably going to have a lot of dormers and just feel very weird but it is also going to be hidden a little bit by these buildings at the front, so it's not a huge problem. I think from here, now I just need to move on to actually building it, finishing it off, getting the decoration in. It's going to be a bit weird. It'll make more sense, obviously, when it's done and we've got colours and stuff separating the different layers. But for now, it's a mess. Some builds are very clear cut. You know exactly what you want and exactly how to build them. And some of them are noodly little messes that take a while to figure out. And there is no right or wrong way of doing them, just whatever works best for you. And this sort of approach works best for me. I just put the foundation in. I roughly decide on colours to split up the buildings and split up the different sections. And then I go along with something like dirt or wool, something that's easy to break. And I just put in implications of layers and heights and roofs and just that sort of thing. And as you're wandering around, just run around it, fly around it, whatever, and you'll kind of feel if something's wrong. You'll feel like, oh, that one's way too tall or way too short, or that bit sticks out too much, whatever. You'll you'll figure out things that look right or wrong. At the moment, this looks kind of as I planned for it to. It's just getting a bit hard to figure out what's what. It's getting a bit hard to, to actually see through the dirt, since there's an awful lot of dirt. But now I shall get back to building, so I'll bring you back when I'm done. And hopefully then you can see what any of this actually means. It'd be interesting to see when it's done, if you can actually see and go, oh yes, I knew exactly what you meant, or if this is all just gibberish. Anyway, see you in a minute.
think for now this is done. It's a little hard to visualise while it's still floating in the air like this because we can still see underneath it. But I think for now it is done. It might get a little bit of rejigging as and when I spot things that I think look a bit weird but for now and as it is sort of floating in the void I think it is done. So this first building which is by the dock I think is going to be some kind of collection tax customs sort of building. So when stuff is brought into the dock it's maybe kind of stored here or moved around but some record of it goes to here and so this is like a, a slightly dark somber building that's just like a big record house. Somebody can work here and uh, keep the books and there's some beds upstairs. Not a huge amount of decoration because I'd, it doesn't really need it to be honest again we're probably not going to do anything here. And then up again we've got another little loft room this one's a bit higgledy-piggledy, but I've just kind of left it. I think loft rooms have a tendency to be like that. So this is the front door, looking out over the lighthouse and over the dock area. It's got quite a pretty view. But there is a little back door here as well, which noodles out through this tiny little alleyway. Now obviously there will be other buildings here, so this is going to feel really penned in. But for now, it just goes out into this little courtyard, where we have another building. This was the weird one that I couldn't figure out what to do with. And it's got this weird cantilevered bit of roof going on here. This might get changed because as you can see it overhangs this house. But this house might just have a real little bit at the back and let it have a bit more yard and then we'll move it forwards a little. We don't know, we'll figure it out. This one doesn't really have a function, it's quite bare. I feel like this is maybe more of like a somewhere where workmen would go to get some food and maybe have a rest. Again there's some bedrooms upstairs. But nothing particularly special. If we come out the front door, you can see that it's oops. We can see that it's got some good layering on the roof. I'm really happy with how the roof came out, considering I really couldn't figure it out in the uh, in the dirt stage. I'm quite happy with how it looks. And then we've got these little houses next door. This one, fairly simple. I haven't decorated the upstairs of these. Oh no, I have. I've put a little bit in this one. I haven't done much in the upstairs because I just don't think the villagers are going to use them. And then the littlest one next door, which is actually one of my favourites because it's just very cute. Again, this is very simple inside. Just some cooking areas, some beds, a little bit of storage and then nothing upstairs. And then this end bit, I've put the, uh, the wooden beam in but I haven't put the structure in yet. Because I'll build it to match the rest of the frontages here. So building wise, that's a good chunk of work done and I'm really happy with how they've come out so far. These, you can see here, these are the campfires that are under the furnaces. You can see them under the houses before I put the, um, put the crypt in. And speaking of, if we come around here, we have the steps up to the graveyard. Now it's a little bit overgrown. I kind of wanted to make it spooky but then realised I'd better leave most of the spooky for the crypt rather than the upper graveyard bit. So we have a minor amount of spooky but mostly it's just a bit overgrown. There's where people have left flowers and the flowers have taken over. I like the idea that there's some sinister stuff. There's this nether wart growing up out of some of the graves just to be a bit weird, a bit suspicious. There's no names or anything on the graves yet because nobody's died except Flitch. But Flitch does actually have a grave. And then there's a tower back here. I don't actually know what this tower is for but I like the height of it. I'm actually going to go sleep because this is uh, getting a bit hard to show you around. Yes, we've got a tower here. I don't really know what it's about, but it's a nice height. It's quite simple. I didn't want it to be too weird. And then inside, it's literally just a tower. I could do to do something up here because you can't actually even see out the windows. You have to jump. Yeah, that's about it, really. I just wanted that bit of height and we had that little patch of space. So that seemed like a really good way of using it. But all in all, I really like how this came out. I was a little bit worried about doing it because it's so many noodly little layers and nothing's, you know, nothing lines up, nothing's symmetrical, but I actually really like how it's come out. It feels very complete. It matches what we've already got. I brought in some mangrove, not mango. I brought in some mangrove wood so that it matches some of the other bits of the village all the way over there. Oh, a golem. Hello, golem. And I've mixed it in with the dark oak roofs as well. I haven't put any spruce in the dark oak roof and I quite like the uniformity of it. This feels a little bit more new, a little bit more cared for. So I want to kind of slowly blend bits of this one, this village area, into this darker town area. But it all looks really nice together. I'll go show you some views. From here it looks quite complete. It's quite a nice, um, 
quite a nice size compared to everything else and you can see how noodly these streets are going to get once they fill in. From over here by the woodcutters you get a better sense of the scale and I like that the tower isn't too tall. Even the tallest building here isn't as tall as the pub, it's like a block or two shorter. And I like that that tower is just a nice height, it's just above all the chimney smoke but it's not towering high up into the sky. This thing is, which we wanted it to do, that's why we made it so tall. I didn't really think about the view from the, um, the main gatehouse when I was planning it. When I kept having to run back to find stuff, I really like how that looks. I feel like these line up really well together. They're not close enough to be annoying, and they're not far enough away to look weird. They're just like a really nice distance from each other. Could probably do to lower that window, because these windows are on a similar level and that kind of annoys me, so maybe could do to drop it, especially since I have to jump when I'm inside the tower to see. Should we do that? Should we just drop it? You there, it's grey at the top and white at the bottom. Yeah. And is that better? Yes, that's better. That feels less deliberate and more... Just coincidental. Yeah, I like that. This has been a bit of a confusing episode because I wanted to do like a walkthrough of how I build things, but I feel like it's just made things more confusing because I'm terrible at explaining things. So I apologise if this has been a little bit confusing. I did my best and it probably wasn't very good, but never mind. But this has been a very long episode, so I think I'm going to call it here for today. As usual, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again next time. Bye for now!